All right, if we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and please stay standing for a moment of silence for yesterday's uh, event. 911 event. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all 3,000 names off and the <laughs> <laughs> okay. we're going to call our meeting to order. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, roll call all board members are present except for Daryl who is excused tonight. We do have proper notification of an open meeting. First action item is recommendation to approve the minutes of the August 15th, 2018 regular board meeting and August 15th, 2018 annual meeting. I move we adopt those minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any question on those? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next action item is resolution to approve the bill list, which was included in your packet. I'll make a motion to approve the bill list. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is communication and comments from members of the public. I don't know if Bob signed up. I don't know if he wants to. Speak. Bob, did you need? Yep. Yeah, okay. I signed up. Yeah, absolutely. Want to see? Yep. Okay. Come on up. Uh, thanks for hearing me. Um, kind of mix things up seeing that no one ever comes here to talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, today I'm here uh, to talk about an email that I received today from school. Um, and I've been in communications with uh, Mr. Bolt today about this email, and it's regarding um, the uh, uh, behavioral assessment system for children. Are all familiar with that? Okay. Um, I, have a bit, I have some concerns about uh, the way it's presented. Um, some of the questions I, I asked Adam today, um, if parents had the opportunity to review the questions before screening, and he provided me those questions, so I got those. Um, I asked him, if you don't sign, uh, uh, if you don't opt out um, uh, from, from this, does I mean the students will still have to do the screening? He answered that. Um, he uh, told me that, um, let me get to the page. Basically it said, um, the students could opt out themselves and, uh, and if the students did opt out themselves, um, they'd be asked if there was a reason why they'd opt out themselves. I'm not sure that um, a uh, screening like this is up to a student to decide whether he wants to opt in or out. I think that's a parent's decision. Um, I asked them if the parents uh, who missed seeing the, the email that went out uh, don't opt out, will the students be required to do the screening? So it's the same answer, the kids will be given the opportunity to opt out or not. Um, <clears throat> and then I asked if assuming the opt out form was not signed and the student is required to take the screening, which is, doesn't sound like he is, um, why isn't the screening an opt in form instead of an opt out form? Uh, in case for those parents who are getting inundated with emails, I'm one of them. Fortunately, I didn't miss it. Um, if parents aren't paying attention um, or if they're missing it, then you know the kids are could the kids could take the tap based screening without the parents knowledge so i think it's, i think it would be a good idea to have the kids or the fam the families the parents opt in for this program and there's a couple of reasons why but the other reason is um you know there's also no official disclosure on on this uh screening uh meaning you know how is the data going to be used and who's it going to be shared with and things like if um, uh, an event would come up where it required law enforcement, how is that handled? None of that's disclosed in the procedure of this screening. So I think that's important for parents to know. Uh, it's just kind of a, a general email, yes or no. Now, obviously, I think we're going to opt out of this. But I, I'm I think I'm speaking for the parents who aren't here 
or aren't paying attention to their emails. I can certainly understand why this might be needed um, with all the things that are going on. Um, you know, we're, my wife and I are very involved parents. We think we have a very good um, feeling of who our son is and what he is. Um, hopefully I'll never be proven wrong. Um, but I can, I can definitely see that there are some families who aren't involved with their children and where this would be very helpful to the school. Um, but I think that, that I think parents need to opt in instead of opt out. Um, the uh, other part of it is because it involves counselors and psychologists, <coughs> I'm not sure that information like this is, is violating HIPAA laws. Um, because we're, we're talking about some, you know, psychological processes here, which is kind of medical. Um, so I have a concern about that as well. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Hopefully, um, there's time to change that to an opt-in procedure. And any future things like this that could um, involve children's health or behavior, where uh, things, things like this, parents are given the opt-in procedure instead of the opt-out procedure. Thank you. Okay. Superintendent's report. And our first superintendent's report item um, should be very enlightening, engaging, interesting. Um, we had a group of students go to Tanzania for a cultural experience and service, and I can't wait for you to hear about it. So, Mr. Harrison is here, and I'll let him take well, away. I'm going to bring up my best kids. I've got Ali and Carlia here who graciously um, responded to my request to come and present. In fact, um, obviously, this was in planning for quite some time, and both of these girls went with us to Ecuador. Uh, so during our trip, we were already talking about it. it'll be great to bring back this message to our board and let them know what happened. So I could go on forever about this, but I'm going to let them talk about it because it was their experience. So ladies, take it away. I'm Ellie Artone. I'm a senior here. I'm Carlia Schulke. I'm also a senior. And basically what we'll be presenting is just the values of service trips as we found on both Ecuador and Tanzania and just kind of the things we've learned and how much it's like changed our lives entirely going on these trips and traveling with Mr. Harriet and Ms. Echo. Um, so because Tanzania is so far away, it did take us about two days to get to where we were going. Um, we met at Arrowhead and drove to O'Hare where we took an eight hour plane ride to Amsterdam. And we had about a four hour layover there, so we were able to um, a little piece of Europe as well. And then after that, we took another eight hour flight to the Kilimanjaro Airport in Tanzania. And then we took a two hour bus ride to the Gilligan Leadership Center in Arusha, which is where we spent our first night. And then from that, we transferred from the Gilligan Leadership Center to our home for the trip, where it was, which was the camp for um, Nui. Um, and basically the first thing that we, after like our hour long car ride, or bus ride, the first thing that we did was we were welcomed by the, some of the mamas of the community who sang a dance for us as we came off the bus and shook our hands and hugged us. And then once we actually got into the camp, all of the workers, all the camp workers, all welcomed us with a song as well. And we all learned our names, they all learned us. And then immediately from there, we went to an activity where we just got to know each other, including the guides, Shaza and Amos, and Shaza and Amos. And then we got to introduce ourselves as well and what we wanted to do here and kind of what our goals were. And then from there, we went to a market where we had $7 to get enough food and supplies for a family between four or more people in that family. And then we had to get supplies for a week. So after we did that to our best of our ability, we had to kind of reflect on why that was important and pretty vital to understand that this is what they live on and we are very grateful. Um, so day four was our first building day. 
Um, so what we were doing, our service trip was to build a classroom for an overcrowded school. Um, so the first day, we were digging up dirt and moving it so that we could start laying the foundation for um, the area that goes around the classroom. And we, the, we spent about two hours doing this and everyone was working really hard and I think we were all surprised by how much we were willing to do. The um, camp workers said that we were the most hard working group they'd ever had. Um, and then after we built, we went to the area that was right next to the school and that was our first um, time really meeting the kids. And we played soccer with them and um, even though there was that language barrier, we were still able to connect with them and have a lot of fun with them. And they were all really interested in learning our names. So even as the days went by um, and we'd walk by the school, and like you could hear them calling our names as we walked by. Um, so then after we played games with them, we went on a hike um, of the entire landscape around the community that we were staying in. And see, like these are some um, mamas that were doing their tours of getting like firewood on the way home. And we saw how people do their laundry outside as well. And then um, after the hike, we returned to the camp and we learned some Swahili. So we were able, we did have, towards the end of the trip, we were able to communicate with the kids a little bit, but they did all kind of laugh at our accent because <laughs> we pronounced everything a little wrong. Yeah. And then day five. So other than our service work that we were building the school for two days, we also did various other activities to try our best to help the community in a certain way every day. So. This day we did a water walk with the mamas. So they obviously don't have water that goes straight to their homes, so they have to use these cans that are jerry cans, and they have to carry them on their heads with a rope. So we had as many cans as we could carry to per one to a person, obviously, and we carried the amount of water that they need for one or two days, which is all of those cans for their cattle and washing purposes and just drinking even. And that was one way in which we could help the mamas as much as we could. And then while we were there, we got to meet two of the mamas, um, Dora and Elena, and they welcomed us into their home and they showed us around and kind of showed us what they do today, day to day. And then, yeah, that was their house. Uh, that small, they had to have like two families, both like six kids. And then the next slide. And then these are just some of the amazing kids that we met. There were hundreds of them, and they were all the kindest, sweetest kids. They had the most fun. We never met like kinder kids, and they played with us in any way possible. Even though, as she said, there was a language barrier, but there was people, there was kids from ages very young to like teenagers that were around our age. But I mean, these are like the kids you and pictures everywhere. They're always smiling and I never expected them to be exactly that. Um, so on day six, another way that we gave back to the community was um, we helped to protect a house where um, boys go after their uh, surgery into manhood and um, we combined, um, it's called foma smearing, which is combining cow manure, dirt, and water, and we used gloves and we had to um, mix all of that together, and then we smeared that on the house, which it actually wasn't, it didn't smell as bad as we thought it was going to, <laughs> but I mean, it was still um, definitely a once in a lifetime experience, <laughs> and so we smeared the entire house, and yeah, which was, really fun and then um, we had our second day of building which was making concrete and then laying it um, down from the foundation for the classroom and we even wrote like Arrowhead Wisconsin in there so we left a little mark um, and then yeah and then that was a smelly day so we just headed back to the camp and all showered <laughs> um, and then day seven this was another day that we could help the community in a different way than that just building their classroom we were actually helping the dads, the babas, by um, helping them herd goats and cattle and sheep and helping them move them where they needed to go. Obviously, you can imagine how big of a group of animals that was, so we all kind of helped as much as we could. And in that time, it was a bit of a calm state, so we got to meet some of the other community members. As you can see Mr. Harriet talking to some of the guys, and then some 
there's another one of our guys in the group who was talking to this little boy and then their mom and all of us and and um, it was also one of our group members' birthdays, so they made us they made her a very nice cake and it was just this whole big celebration. It was so much fun. Um, so day eight was the safari day, which was a very exciting day. Uh, we took a four-hour bus ride to the national park, and we took two different buses just so that everyone on our group could have a window seat so they could be able to see everything around us. Um, so we saw every animal that you think of when you think of Africa. And so we saw elephants, giraffes, um, zebras. We saw two lions, which was very rare, too. Um, we saw wildebeest. Um, impalas, all these kinds of birds, and then as we are on that um, safari, we did each each bus had a, the Maasai warrior with them, with the animals around us, and um, then after the safari day, we went to a Shanga store, which it, well it's called the Shanga store, and it is employed only by disabled people, um, just so that they have a chance to have a job when typically in that area they probably wouldn't be able to find anything because of the lack of opportunities for them. And they create uh, pieces of art and different products using only recycled goods. And then this was our last day kind of being in the community for that entire day. So at the beginning of the day was our last building of the classroom. So we were actually building up the wall. So we were putting cinder blocks on top of the cement that we made the previous day and then also making some more of that. And just doing as much as we could because we knew we had limited time, obviously. And after that, we had this big celebration, saying goodbye to all of the kids, as there was like, so many to say goodbye to all of them. So we, they told us what they wanted to say to us, uh, their goodbyes, and we told them theirs. Um, and just said goodbye to the kids that we had met and just so quickly had built relationships with. So it was a very hard, a very emotional day, and at the end, they had warrior training where we got to see all the weapons that the side warriors used. And then that night had a celebration where they made us another cake and then had a whole big celebration again. Um, so then days 10 and 11 were just us um, getting ready to return home. So after we left the camp that we were staying at, um, we stopped at different stores so we could buy gifts for our friends and family to take home. Um, and then we did the same trip that we took there. So we left from the Kilimanjaro Airport to Amsterdam and then from Amsterdam to Chicago. And we just wanted to say that this entire time, we, like, it obviously wasn't a resort. It wasn't anything nice, but none of us minded it because it was just an experience of a lifetime. And none of us would trade that for anything, no matter the luxuries. I mean, we were staying in tents, four to a tent, and then the showers had to be warmed up by the employees there and so me and Ellie, we, those, those entire 11 days we only showered once. <laughs> 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 okay, well we didn't smell, we had deodorant. Yeah, we, 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 we were there. there. <laughs> 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 yeah, so okay, yeah, we yeah. Yeah, that was the day. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> and we just felt extremely safe. I mean, these people, they did over the top made us feel so secure in that camp. and. We could have asked for anything more, and like as we said a thousand times, we've never met more kind or welcoming people. I mean, we just wish we could go back and then just see them again because they we built such close relationships in such little time. And after like, after every activity that we did, after every day, we had a reflection with everyone in our group, all of our guides. We got to talk about what we learned that day, how it affected us, how it's going to affect us. Is there anything that we could say? And just. I mean, this entire time, the little things, like learning Swahili, and there was a lunar eclipse when we were there, which was just absolutely incredible. And you can imagine there's no light pollution, so it was beautiful. And then going on walks with some people, um, learning songs, playing cards with our guides, Shaza and Amos and Emily and Brojas, and then just dancing and singing and having a long celebration. And um, the entire trip, we felt super safe the entire time. Um, when, even when we were sleeping, that people staying up late, like just in case something were to happen, and they would stay up all night, just like we had like security around the camp that would just guard us, because there was some um, like hyenas, but we had dogs to protect us from those. And then um, 
even if you were like a picky eater, had dietary restrictions, like I'm a vegetarian, so I couldn't eat meat, but they had a variety of different foods we could eat. Um, so they com the foods they would give us every day were um, EF certified, so everything was safe. No one got sick from the food. Um, there was a combination of food that comes from their culture and their area, um, combined with like more Western style foods like bread and butter and rice and well, I guess rice is, you know, and all that. And um, we still keep in contact with our group leaders like Shaza, Amos, Olay, and Proches, and. The experiences that we made, like that we had on this trip are like, we can't even really put them into words. It's something that you can't just talk about because you actually have to be there to experience it. And it shows the importance of international relations and how important it is to really, when you travel to actually experience the culture rather than just going to a hotel. Um, and I think I can speak for the entire group when we say that we want, we're gonna be talking about this trip for the rest of our lives. And we just hope that other people can get this experience this because this is our last year here and we hope that we can do it again. But after we leave, we never know. So we're just hoping that as many people as, as they can can do this too. Any questions? Yes. Uh, two questions. The, when you went to get the water, what was the water source? Um, it was just, I don't know it where. It was a well that had a trough, a big trough, so they had to fill it up. Yes, see, there's the trough, and then the well is over there, and you basically just had to use scoops to put it into the jig. And so it was clean water. The water was not clean. It was the water that they share with the cattle, and it actually has, I think they said there was an excess amount of fluoride in it, so it actually turns their teeth brown. But I mean, we, we I mean, EF that. applied, like, supplied us really clean water, but it just showed us, like, the lack of sanity they have, or sanitary <laughs> <laughs> they, have. And they, actually, they do have access to some different sources, but um, for instance, like this is the trough that all the animals will feed out of. There's also, if you look into the background of that picture, you can also see there's another, like there's an actual water spout that you could have gotten and you could have filled up from. Um, so sometimes, like by choice, they'll, they'll just, if they're just kind of used to it, we'll take it here, it's available, somebody else is at the spout, even though that would be cleaner. Sure. And then you mentioned the workers. Who are the workers? Um, if you go back to the first building day. Are they Westerners? No, no. no. They're from there. They're from Tanzania. But okay. they obviously yeah. know as much English as possible. And they would do <coughs> jobs like when we had to take a shower, they would have to boil water and they basically with cold water and then put it in a bucket that had a shower spot on it. So they would have to do that and then like cook for us. It was basically they just stayed at that camp and helped us with whatever we had to do in our tents and stuff like that. So, like, these people here, and they would <coughs> also help us with building because we're not always the strongest, and they would help us with the, the heavy stuff. Yeah, we also build relationships with them. Can you talk about the Maasai warriors? Yeah, like so what their role was? we had it, two Maasai warriors with us. They were at the LA. Yep, that's the LA and that's coaches. And so basically, yeah, there's um, they um, So they were describing the different traditions that come from their tribe, and they were very, very smart, so they knew all the history of the areas all around us. So as we were um, experiencing these different things, they were telling us the history behind it and why it's important and that we have to do it. And like, even Shaza and Amos, who work beside warriors, but they were, everyone who worked with us or interacted with, with us was from Tanzania, from this region. So, Shaza, one of our guys, actually grew up at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. Do the Maasai still um, predominantly, um, uh, are they known still nomadic and deal with goats and cattle yeah. and such? Is that Their wealth is measured by how much cattle they have, mm -hmm. so they all still have their own little. Okay. Yeah. But they, but they are also, they are very territorial, so they have villages. Um, the kind of being there was sort of some insight into why you have a lot of that tribal conflict, because when water runs out and all you have is this 20 acres, you have to go somewhere, and it's the next 20 acres over. And that's where they run into issues. But they, I mean, everything that you see, like where approaches is walking in the middle there, it's all open grazing areas, and one of the things they'll do politically between tribes is they'll sign treaties, so to speak, to share some of that grassland, because as you can see, it's not, there's not a lot of it, but that's all they, that's all they subsist on. 
I don't know how many went on this trip. I think it was 21 students and then three dogs in the sketch, Mr. Harriet, and and how was Tanzania chosen? Oh, um, Ellie actually was one of the people who suggested because she's always wanted to go to Africa. Yeah, I actually, um, I was actually saving up to go to Africa through the National Geographic Student Expeditions Program. And then I was talking after Ecuador, yeah, because I loved Ecuador so much. I just wanted to keep traveling. And then we were talking to Mr. Harry and Ms. Heko throughout like, the beginning of the year and talking about how much we still want to go on another service trip because it's always more fun to go with your friends. Okay. And then, yeah, and then they, sh they understood how important, like how much we loved going on that trip. And I think they loved going on Ecuador too, so they wanted to do another trip as well. So then they worked hard to make Tanzania happen. Did you work at a well in Ecuador? Is that what you were working yeah. at? You were working yeah. at a well yeah. there, yeah. Right? A water we, treatment facility, yeah. So it's something to bring like a very, um, I don't know what to call it, but a tribe that was deep in the day for some reason, and we had to help them build a water treatment facility to make the clean water. Yeah, because you can have five, there's five different pillars of me to we. So we did the water one in Ecuador, and then we did the education one in Tanzania. And they also have um, food oh. opportunities and health that you could also do service work well, for. Well, you have to like work and do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Redo your senior year a few times also. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. <laughs> well, every time later, you should do that. Right? <laughs> what a great experience. So, yeah, very nice. So after you leave, does another school group come in and do something? Yeah, else? they said that because everything is hand labor, it takes them months to finish that classroom with here. It could take us like a couple weeks. So we do as much as we can, and then they said every couple weeks a new, or well, it depends on which when groups come, but every couple weeks um, a group comes and just keeps going where we left off. Like when we got there, someone had already started, so there was already like a bottom and some were already built up, but we just continued what they had started, and then another group's gonna come after us, and they're just gonna keep going until it's finished. Obviously it's, um, like it's still a need, so people there will still try and do the best to continue until something that's why we want to go and have things as possible. Give as much to the world as we can. Is that a belt buckle or a cell phone? Really they all have cell phones. There. Really? <laughs> yes. They said that they can, they were, we were really surprised because more people in the country have cell phones than have toilets. And everyone has either one phone or two. So. <laughs> so, yeah, it's basically, I mean, you can imagine how high heart to do it. I want to try it. <laughs> and, you know, one of the yeah. things we ask them is, like, how is that possible? The average family is living on $7. And I'm thinking, I'm talking to these guys knowing what my family cell phone bill is. And what they said is that once the infrastructure was there, I mean, they had to get prices in line with the people that are there. So they are dirt cheap plans. Uh, their phones are knockoffs from China. So it's not it's not the same stuff that we have, but it's functional. That's so when we met kids, like you know, not all kids didn't have phones, but when they saw us, they like, right away they wanted the phone because they wanted to get the music off of it because <laughs> listening to Western music and it was interesting because it, it the tribes and whatnot it seems extremely remote because it is, but they have enough technology that they know what's outside and that's so part of why they're very inquisitive. inquisitive. They have cell towers. Like yeah. Oh, yeah, I was very concerned about if I was going to be able to, I was the emergency contact person, and we drove on these roads that you would not drive on in the United States to get there, and I had perfect cell service. It was, it was strange. <laughs> right, there are parts of Merton where I can't. I was good there. Obviously, um, Tanzania is one of the most populated countries in the world, and there's over 250 kids. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then he built his own super course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was not the norm. That was the, norm. That was the one guy. <laughs> yeah, but he'll be talking about that for a long time. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then um, we actually did, we 
At the end of one of our days when we went with the children and we played with them and stuff, we went into one of their classrooms and almost explained kind of how their day goes and how crowded those classrooms are. That's why we were building the other one. So all of us, we sat like three to a bench that were about like probably that small and we're all <laughs> pretty big <laughs> compared to those little kids, but it still was extremely crowded and he kind of took us through. It's about the same like like they have like geography and math and science and those bits at once and they also have like English because that's one of the most prominent languages and I'm not sure how long they lasted, how long their school days were, but I just found that it was very crowded and they had to do the best that they could to teach as many kids as possible. If I could piggyback off that, their, uh, their first school bell was at 4 a.m. Yeah. So at 4 a.m. they rang the bell. The kids that were in the, um, the kids that lived there, they would have to get up at 4 a.m. The other ones were starting to walk because some of them are coming from miles away. So then they'd get there at 6 o'clock, and that's when they started cleaning the school. So they would take makeshift rooms that were about this big, and they'd be on their hands and knees in the dirt, sweeping any leaves that had fallen into the dirt the day before. Then they go behind the school, they sing their school song, then they would do a few laps, and then they would get started, and that was probably about 6.30, uh, 6.30 to 7 o'clock in the morning, and then they went to probably about 2 o'clock. And then, then they'd fill up their buckets. Kids that were about this high would fill up their buckets at school because school had water that was clean, and then get the walk home. It was amazing. I mean, watching it as a teacher is just like, yeah. how, why? <laughs> how is it that these kids are, but that's what they do. That's what they have to do. That's all that's available. Wow. And the buckets weren't little buckets. They were like oh, no. three to five gallon buckets. No. And the, the really little kids might have three gallon yeah. but Like, I mean, three to five gallon buckets of water that they would just carry for, you know, sometimes hours walking home. We should try that here for a day. Kids in my house, and they're in the back part of our property. We have three acres, and my son, that's his job. And every now and then I feel bad, you know, when he's carrying that water back there, and after going there, I'm like, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> he is good. He is way bigger than these kids. It's not, not torture. <laughs> so, girls, you, you went there at least with one of the primary purposes was to build this school, or at least yeah. to try to make that's progress on the building. Mm -hmm. So you kind of knew what to expect, that that's what you were going to do. What were some things that happened that you didn't expect, maybe that were left in the behind you? I think the relationships we built was the thing that was the most surprising to me. Um, when we went to Ecuador, we, it was, I mean, we did do service work, but we were moving throughout the country the entire time. But um, in Tanzania, we stayed in the same like centralized community the entire time, so we were able to build like much more like like nice relationships. Um, so I was just surprised because like I I'm Facebook friends with them all now now like now. So it's kind of fun to know that we'll like be in contact too, because all the like international relations throughout the world, which is always a cool thing to say. And like I felt when we were leaving. I think I felt that we made more of a difference because we grew so close with those people. Like on one of the goodbye days, um, all the like the mamas of the village made us jewelry and then they put it on us to say goodbye and everyone cried and it was, I think it was really hard. we all grew very close with each other. So it was a lot more emotional than I thought it was going to be too. And um, obviously like the main reason we went to Ecuador and to Tanzania and tried to come here today was because we love to help these countries that need it, and that's one of our goals like in life, I suppose, is to just help as many people as we can and get it to as many parts of the world and just give all that we can to them. And just in Ecuador, I, we both are in Spanish, so we can speak Spanish to them, we can communicate to them, but like she said, we were moving around the country, so when we were here, there was that humongous language barrier. We can't speak really fluently. It's a lot harder. <laughs> so, just like them hugging you and just giving you these gifts was just like absolutely incredible. Yeah. For just work that we were doing out of like just what we wanted to do, not for any particular reason. I guess if I could add uh, an interesting story when you guys were talking about connections. 
Uh, when we got picked up from the airport, uh, we got into these buses, and buses, international, third world buses are much different than ours. There's no aisles or anything. You are just packed in there. So I'm packed in there. I'm near the front, and I'm sitting next to. Oh well, yeah, we got them somewhere. No, not that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Um, and that was after we knew each other. But when we first got in there, I'm sitting next to Prochis, who is the man over here on the left, and he's you know he's just kind of making small talk. He said, "Well, what's your name?" I said, "My name's Chris." And he looked at me and he's like, "Harriet." <laughs> He's like, I've seen your pictures. <laughs> uh, it, it blew my mind, but he had been on Facebook and he saw he saw some of my photography already before we got there through other connections. But I was like, how is it possible? I should not know a lot of warrior. Well, now, yeah, actually, now we, we are in communication quite a bit. I had um, pro the, the people there are just so amazing. If you think of I guess I haven't been to places like this before, so you guess you have your preconception of what they are, but these guys are college graduates who grew up in, in some cases, mud huts, uh, who just don't have access to the things that we do, um, yet they know all the things that are going on, so the questions and uh, everything that they have are just, you know, it just really kind of sets you back, like, boy, I wish I could bring you with me. They really want to come to the United States. Like, I would love to bring you here because you are going to be successful. I don't care what it is. You work so hard. You are this intelligent. You would be unbelievable. Um, but they can only go so far. I mean, when we were, when we drove around um, near Arusha, we never saw like an actual real store or anything. Um, the clothes that they get are almost all secondhand. You know, even if they have something that's kind of good Packers. that they wear to that they wear to. Well, yeah, we saw with many Packer fans. Um, so lots of guys in Packer stuff, and they had they had no idea what they were wearing, but they were happy to be in pictures with us. But it's just just so different to see that. But to know that they were such good people, and all they wanted was to be successful and to be happy, just like us. Even the people we did meet, like when we were driving, we were wave to every kid we saw on the street yeah. and wave to every person we saw on the street because they were just that friendly. They didn't even know us. We just obviously looked a little different when we were in a giant bus. But like they were still like friendly. We didn't even get to meet them. Yeah, all the kids looked so excited yeah. to be waving. They were and running I, up to our bus. But like when I came back here I was like I almost forgot that I can't <laughs> 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, Java was hello. Uh, I <laughs> um, have a little card. They say, house. they say, um, what was it? It was like, how do you say it? How, how are, are you? It was, how Because it's Oregon. And then you say like, Missouri Sana or it's Poa like, means cool. Yeah. And then bubble, we, bubble, 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 bubble. yeah, and then we learned, um, their traditional song, so like we're not gonna sing it. But like towards they the end of the trip, they sang it for us, and it was amazing. It was yeah, good. they were good. Towards the end of the trip, everyone was like singing it together, and we'd all get so hyped up and get so excited, and we really didn't care how crazy we probably looked. It but was, they were doing it with us. They were encouraging us. They yeah, were welcoming us to do it with them. Yeah, we even sang the song with the kids too. Yeah, and they were all dancing, super excited that we knew like one of their songs. So it was really cool. You guys don't have to find this, but I have a a video of all of you guys walking with the water, singing Jambo, oh, yeah. and I'm, oh, gosh. <laughs> we're filming from behind you, so I'll have to, I'll have to, maybe I can share it with myself with it. <laughs> so what would you tell a student who was thinking about going on one of these service trips, but was kind of wavering a little bit, and not, not so sure about going to a foreign country, and uh, unknown and tired like that? Uh, I think, I mean, it was Ellie's basically for first time going out of the country in Ecuador, and she was obviously nervous, but just the amazing experiences that you had there, the way that it opens up your eyes and your heart, and like you cannot even begin to explain how much it affects you for the rest of your life to anyone who asks, but just to show them pictures and videos and tell them that it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And like when I came back and I would show my friends these pictures and tell the stories, and like, like I said, the small things, they were like, I wish I would have gone. 
and I try my best to explain that before it's too late. Yeah, a lot of people also, like, a couple of my friends were going to go and they backed out because their parents didn't think it was safe, but the entire time yeah. it was super safe. There were strict rules that we had to be with someone the entire time, and we always had to stay, like, even if we were, like, going, like, just kids away from the teachers, we always had to stay in the same area so they knew, like, what was going on, and, um, it definitely raises your awareness for everything around you, so it makes you feel more cultured. And, yeah. Are you participating in the Arrowhead School Experience curriculum? I was going to, and but um, okay. So when I have taken, like I've taken the two language um, requirements, so I was going to. But at the time, I wanted to be a journalist, and then I was looking at the other classes that we had to take, and I'm like, oh, those look boring, so I wasn't going to. <laughs> but after going on these trips, I actually want to do something with international relations or international business, and I'm, all, I'm taking all those classes anyway. But because I didn't do the global um, seminar junior year, I can't do it now. I, yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't have a chance because my like course load was so full to take a second language, so I wasn't even able to. But I really wish that it was advertised more because looking at it now, how I was presented to it when I was a freshman and sophomore year, I just wish I could have learned a bit more about it because I definitely wish I would have. Yeah, and I wish there was a chance to take it to like your like the global seminar class your senior year because I definitely would have gone back yeah. and taken it because I had because all the classes required for you to become like um, the global certificate. I'm taking all of them. I just that's the only thing is I wasn't in that class. Yeah, I just I really wish I would have. It would have like tied in so well. It would have helped me really just fully grasp it. But like again, I I really wish it was a would be advertised more. Sounds like we have some good spokeswomen for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Figure it out. Thank you guys for coming and sharing. Maybe we'll have another one yeah. for next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 you walked in the stair. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe The visitors usually go first. Uh, Greg's going to fill us in on kind of the end of last year wrap up and then beginning of this year highlights. So when I started doing this and started putting this together, I um, thought we'll do the obviously do it in chronological order, but it just didn't seem to work. It just seemed some of the stuff that they were doing at the end was getting ready for doing the kickoff right now. So it's kind of jumbled. It's a muck. It's just kind of a mess. Okay. But uh, I want to just kind of show you what we were up to here. I'm going to do this from here. Hopefully you can see that. I just wanted to first get started and kind of let you know about kind of what the role of our of the building level team is. The building level team is, is, uh, is Dev, Becky, Brian, myself. We kind of make that make up that team and so our, our major responsibility really is those, those first two are really our major responsibilities maintaining and enhance a positive school culture and climate for student staff and the community and then deal with the day-to-day -day operations of the school since we've kind of switched our you know responsibilities the, the there used to be more curriculum stuff on my plate but that's gotten shifted over when we went to having a director of learning and so this is really what the, what our role is, and then the last thing is we provide support for the other teams. So I just wanted to, to kind of talk to you a little bit about that to make sure you understand that. So what I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to talk about is, is a couple of groups that we that have started that kind of bubbled up, um, and so it's the uh, it's the Slam and the Peers for Peers. I don't know if you're familiar with that, if we're talking about about that, but the Slam group is the students leading a mark, and these are both student-led groups, or we have advisors for them. Um, actually, Deb, Becky, and Ryan and I serve as kind of like the, the uh, advisors for this group, and and really the the it's, it's them kind of saying, what do I want to do in our school? How, what what kind of 
what do I want to leave with our school? So I show this picture to you because that's one of our study halls at South Campus Study Hall. And prior to starting this group, that was a white wall that students looked at every day for years, just stared at that wall. If you were in that front desk right there, and that's what you stared at was, was a white wall. And so they're trying to do this around the building, <coughs> trying to make this place a better culture, a better climate for the students. So the things that, that they do are, are all about doing that and building that for our students. So we go, and these are some, just some other things here. You can read those here below the stairways um, at South Campus, and if, uh, I don't know if you're close enough to read those. I, oh, hold on, you know what? I can pull it up on my here, so I can, hopefully I can. I can read them, you want me to read them for you? I think, yeah, yes, they just lost okay, it, so. so. the bottom up it says, dream big, uh, smile often, never give up, think positively, believe in yourself, be mindful of others, always tell the truth, embrace your challenges, Learn from your mistakes. Surround yourself with good people. And so they see that going up and down the stairs on both sets of stairs. This is a this we got from a jo from Jostens from the Renaissance. We're partnered with them. This is we we sent our kids for the last three years to a conference at uh, Carroll College, and we have there's, it's kind of cool because there are, there's like 1,100 students there from all over. We get to send 15 or 20, and there's from all over the, this part of the state. There's kids there, and they and they do. Um, they have speakers and they recognize students. And a couple of you, I think we brought it in here two years ago when Anthony's, of course, he was recognized. That's part of that. And, and this is the ongoing support that they give us. So we get packets once a month of things that we can do. And this was one of the things we got. They're just, they're just step things. So we put them on here at, put them on here at South Campus. This is at North Campus. And, we, and if you will walk around, you'll see these kinds of things all over the place. And they're just little signs, little things, you know, that, uh, you know, I'm going to have a hard time reading those. Uh, top left, stay strong, stay positive. To the right, believe in yourself. Bottom, don't wish for it, work for it. Um, and ability in what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. Attitude determines how well you do it. And you'll see those, if you had South Campus, but all over North Campus, you'll see those those signs out there. Again, trying to promote, trying to make it positive for for the students and for the staff as well. And then this is this is the North Campus uh, uh, um, uh, study hall again trying to bring that, you know, so just plain white walls, trying to make it inviting, uh, something that you know, sh shows what we're up to, what we're doing here, what we're about. So then, what the, so they kind of plan some things, and they want to do things different for our freshman orientation, or re registration, for freshman registration. So this is, uh, this comes, this is what we did at freshman registration, if you, um, that's that's uh, Mitchell, and, and he does not want to be called Mitch, is that right? He, he corrected Adam the other day, walking in the hall. Uh, so so we had Wally there, and and so after they got done getting their pictures taken for their for their uh, yearbook and for their ID, they could come over, and Wally was there. They could take a picture. Oops, went the wrong way here. Um, they have this thing that I can show you. So then they all we have also had all the freshmen sign this, and I actually brought it because I need signatures from two of you on here. So I need Laura's signature and Bob's signature. So this is actually a copy of our diploma, and then they're all signing it, making a commitment to gradually be involved. And so we have not all, but we're working on it, getting all the freshmen to sign this. Um, so I mean, you see there's quite a few of them on there, but on the actual diploma we need Bob's and Laura's signature, so I'll just bring them over here right now, and you guys can <laughs> put your John Hancock's on this. Do it one at a time, so he's gone. He doesn't literally mean John Hancock, but... So as, a, as the students came in for registration, they all signed that, and this was all kind of, this all in the South Campus Library, so they signed that, went and got their pictures taken, and then went over and, uh, Worked with or went with Wally. Hello. So <laughs> I think that's, those are permanent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For posterity. Yeah. John. And they were the kids were pretty excited about this. This was something that we worked with our Johnson guy. They had uh, they actually made this specially for us. They weren't doing this for anything or anybody else, but Deb talked to our jobs and said, hey, listen, all the business we give you, can't you uh, come on something a little bit bigger? They had a little one like this for us. Come on. <laughs> that's not going to work for 540 kids. So, so as they came in, they signed in. And these are just some pictures that, you know, just kind of showing you what we're trying to do, we're trying to make it warm, make it comfortable, make it like a place they want to be. Um, 
So there's uh, another one. Is a this was an interesting one. This is a freshman boy's guy, class of 2022. So, and that's his sister with him, not as enthused as he was. <laughs> 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 um, and here's another one with a, with a um, daughter <coughs> and a father, class of 22, with Wally as well. So they could pick what they wanted. They had little things that they could hold up and to take the pictures. And we, I would say, probably some of the freshmen that went through got their picture taken. And, and we have those, and we'll, we'll use those for various things throughout the year. So then, I, um, so when I'm putting this together, I, one of the things that we, we were working on last year, obviously, is hiring our new staff, and that's one of the responsibilities that the that we're all, that we're involved in. Adam does interviewing for his group and, and leads that, but we're also involved in that, and then all the rest of the teachers that are hired go through come through our our group. So I just wanted to give you give you a picture. Some of you are actually able to meet the new teachers, but we took pictures of all of the new teachers in there. Um, as much as we could in their role. So you can see that's Nick, and he's our new school psychologist. Um, and that one was, this one's kind of a staged one because, you know, he's, he's working as a psychologist, he's not in the classroom. The rest of them were, you can see they were not staged, they just went, we went in the classrooms and took the pictures of them. So so that's Nick, he's, uh, and he, we, he came in from Elmbrook. Elmbrook. Yep. Um, and, and I want to just, just keep, keep that in mind, this one, because there's a couple that I want to kind of make note of after we get through all of this. So, and this is Andy, and he's our he's a new family consumer ed teacher at both campuses, and uh, he's brand new, right out of college. This is Scott Rice. He is a new special ed teacher. We had him last year as a special ed aide, and he did a long-term sub for us and did an outstanding job. And so we thought we have to land him. He also uh, coaches football, and he's awesome with the families. He's awesome with the kids. He's been a really great addition for us. This is a Jana, and you may remember her. We brought her in last year, actually, when Mike Dolly left us uh, in March or, or February, rather. We went and kind of stole her from uh, Hartford. She was she was not really excited about her role there, and was glad to come on over. And we and she actually was able to finish out the year here with us. So she was, she's been here for about three months, but because she wasn't here for the first part, she's still considered a, a newbie for us. Not a stage photo. That is not oh, that's just, that's just, that's just, that's just that's what she's in class. Yes. My, my daughter had her last year, and she was very mad because she really liked Mr. Dolly. And then, and I mean, within a week, she's like, "Oh my God, she's awesome, Dad." <laughs> <laughs> so we we yeah we we were able to land some really solid folks. Uh, so this is this is Katie Herman. She's a, a English teacher. She came in for um, oh. Andrew. Andrew, Andy Fribber, thank you. And we, she came from Hartford as well. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, they all uh, another, <laughs> yeah, another another gal from Hartford applied and was a little disappointed. Though when she didn't, when she found out she didn't get it, she was, she said, you know, if anything opens up, please, I would love, I want to get over there. So, and these, you know, they're, they're experienced teachers. So um, we're we're very happy and um, able that we were able to land this. Um, and then this is this is Kara Mooney Lekowski, our teacher. I want to talk about her as well a little bit when I get when we get to the last slide. Um, <clears throat> and she's uh, she was an at-home mom for ten years, uh, eight years maybe. And she had been, she had taught arts over Oconomowoc prior to this. And um, we were very fortunate to to land this to land her. And then our last person that we that we hired is is Ryan Dodge. And Ryan um, had done some aid work here. And then he student taught here, and then he took a job at Lake Country School, and then we had an opportunity here when Gene Henschel left at the kind of last minute, we were able to land him. Uh, <coughs> he, um, he does have a spouse on staff, so this, uh, you know, so Trina is his is his wife. So, um, so he's had a lot of experience here, and understands it. What I want I wanted to point out those two for you because, if, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, yeah, I mean, our pool is getting shallower and shallower and shallower. So. When we hired the when we hired the uh, family consumer ed, there were five applicants. That was it. And when we went to go interview, three of them had already taken jobs. So we had two people to choose to choose from. When we went to the psychologist, we went. We interviewed a, a number. They interviewed a number. Um, couldn't find one to come. So uh, he did not apply for the job. And when asked him to apply for the job. Same thing with Kara, our art teacher. We went through, we were interviewing. We didn't have a lot of applicants. The ones that came in were really not quality, the, not the quality that we were looking for. And it was, I think Donna's, Donna knew her mother. 
and they worked together. And she and happened to mention that that she was that she was a former she was an art teacher. So he called her up and said, "Hey, what do you think? Come on over. We'll talk to you." And so she brought her. She she came into the interview. Brought her little son with her to the interview. And he sat there and colored and and we chatted and and. We were lucky to get her, and that, and and she only is interested in part time because she can't be because of her kid situation. But that's what's happening. Our the pool is is really getting shallower and shallower all the time, and, and it's also not just for our teaching staff, but for our support staff as well. Becky and Deb, when we're trying to fill some of those spots for for uh, the greeters and for uh, study hall supervisors, lunch supervisors, it's getting harder and harder. And as the economy starts to continue to get better. We cannot compete financially with them. You know, we're talking. I was talking the other day with with one of them in the lunchroom, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I get ten, fifty an hour here, or something like that." And and Chick Fil A is opening up, and they're paying fourteen dollars an hour. You know, so it's like, and so we can't compete at, on the, on, the, on the price. There's no way we can do that. We can't keep up with it. So we have to do it in, in different ways. And one of the ways is trying to make this the atmosphere here a place where people want to work, where people want to be. So that's kind of what our building charge is. So, so I'm going to jump back now to one of our activities. And, and since he's wearing his wings t-shirt, we'll, we'll kind of I'll use that for the transition into the wings. Uh, and you're, you're all aware of what's going on with wings. What we've had, but there's, been some, there's a few different things this year. So I just want to kind of point out some of those things. But we have, as you see, 497 out of 540. That actually number, that actual number is really 538 because we've had two students who enrolled after, so they wouldn't have been able to be in the in the pool. They 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 weren't here yet when we did it, and we, we've changed some of the way we do things. But if you look here, these are the options. Kids can pick two of these to go to and be to do an activity and and you know get get acclimated to the school. That's what it's all about. But getting these young folks acclimated, feeling comfortable wanting to be here. There's a lot of work and effort put in on the front end for our, with our mentors, our student mentors that come here. They're here, they spend a lot of time here working with getting this all set up. So it's not just willy-nilly, it's, it's meaningful. So, uh, but it's really very, va extremely valuable for our students and just for the whole organization. And then again, we have a have Thursday morning, we have parents here. And I think this is like 140 parents showed up to talk and ask questions of the freshmen. So that was really a, a good experience here. A couple pictures. Coming from here, we have uh, Mr. Stuber, and you can read over here. They're basically it says <laughs> no, reading that. it says uh, middle, you know, I think high school versus middle school or something like that, and just talking about how you, you know, your teachers are not going to be chasing you down to get your homework done. They're not going to be, you know, you have to take charge on yourself. You have to go talk to teachers. So we're teaching them. That's the goal: is teach them how to be high school students. We don't let them just come in and figure it out. That we teach them and make sure so that they can hit it running and be successful when they get here, as opposed to kind of taking a semester to kind of work through and figure it out and then falling behind during that time. So, but it's not just all of this. There's a lot, of, there's some fun games they like to have. And so this was something, and thank you Dave for bringing the, for bringing the fire truck over here, but they were doing, they did uh, all the groups put together, they worked in group, small groups and they tried to protect an egg and then they dropped the egg from the fire truck. And so they're trying to design, trying to design a, it's problem solving design a package that will protect your egg when it falls. And there was some that were very successful and some that weren't so successful. 98 feet. It was, it was 98 feet that they fell? Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. And they were, and many that, that survived, right? Yes, a lot of them. Okay. All right, so a couple of other things I just want to keep you uh, informed into that, that's going on. I have a group that's the principal's cabinet. As a matter of fact, Ellie, who was just here, she's on my principal's cabinet. And we meet, it's a group that I meet with um, monthly and it's four groups so I do I do two groups at north and two groups at south it's during their lunch hour because I don't want them to miss any school and I don't want it to be after school because all these kids are involved so we have to do it during lunchtime so we get a lot done it's uh, quickly we have to really work at it and kind of stay on task but we do get a lot done and we they, be, they become like my ears and eyes and communicate back to me and give you an example of one of the things, the, the announcement monitors, and I know that we talked about this last year, but if you see right there, we have six of those around the, around the building now. So what was happening prior to this came up in our principal's cabinet. We, have, we do announcements before school every morning. Well, the teachers don't like it to be, like, the bell rings at, se at 720. The teachers don't want the announcements read after 720 because it cuts into their teaching time. And we only have 40-minute lessons, so if it's five minutes of, of announcements, 
now that's a 35 minute class it's really not fair to those kids not fair to those teachers so we only do the we read the we do the after the bell we do the pledge and there might be one or two really important announcements that everybody has to hear that's it and then they're done all the other announcements are read at 7 15 to 7 20 here and 7 25 7 30 at north well the kids can't hear them because they're they're walking the halls they're talking to their friends they're not paying attention so the kids are like you know mr Tor, we can't hear the announcements it sounds like it sounds like charlie brown's teacher you know rum, 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 rum. and they can't hear anything so we came up with this well let's brainstorm what can we do so this is what we came up with and so we have in, in the study halls at north and south in the in the cafeterias at north and south and the foyers at north and south that's what they have those announcements scroll all day long so now where it's the read up there is something about uh, drama club and contact Ms. Marcano. Well, if I didn't hear that, how do I know how, what to do? But now I can see that and it's all over. We have lunchroom menus on there. So, and if we need to like call kids down to the office, we can put it on there. Non-emergency stuff, you know, mom, you left your lunch. Or your left your lunch off. You know, <laughs> boom, we just stop down the office. So that's where, that's what we, you know, and that's just one of the things. Um, a few years ago, you know those, as you drive, you see those, those signs, those stop signs right in the middle of the road um, that, are in the, that are actually in the road here, at, over here, right in front of South Campus. Well, we kids were almost getting hit by cars because there were, cars were flying through there and kids were walking between cars. And so that was there, that came up totally from them. I wouldn't have known that. Um, the fact that we teach health at, the, at South Campus uh, to, to freshmen, that was years that was never done. It was always sophomore, 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 sophomores. They had a speaker come in, he's talking about drugs and alcohol, and, and I said, uh, you know, what do you guys think of, uh, of Mr. McGowan? He's pretty cool. Like, yeah, he's great, he's great. Everyone's saying how great he is, and one girl's going like this, and I'm like, what's up? And she said, well, it's good stuff, but it's too late. He's talking to us about drugs and alcohol. We're all sophomores. That, that summer between freshman and sophomore years, the summer where kids experiment, where we, are, we have our licenses, and we have access to other kids, we don't have jobs yet. That's when we need to have, we have to have that information before that. So that's what we thought, okay. So that's what pushed us to move it. So it does have a lot of uh, impact on what goes on in the school here. Uh, freshman meetings, this is an interesting thing. And this is something that uh, Deb and I started two years ago. And we started meeting with the freshmen. And we bring them in six at a time and we just talk about stuff. And our goal was, we didn't really have a goal how many we were just going to see how it was going to go, and we probably got maybe about 20% of the freshmen in that came in for these little sessions with us. And we just, we spent about 40 minutes with them, they sit down and we ask them questions like what school do they go to, uh, what's their favorite subjects, what's their least favorite subjects, what kind of sports are they involved in. So, uh, so this is one of our sessions from, actually this year, we, this is one of our little sessions. So we sit around and we go, kind of go around the horn. I, I introduce myself, Deb introduces herself, and then we just go around the horn. They all introduce themselves, kind of the same questions. The purpose of this is kind of threefold. It's one, for them to get to know us a little bit. And we tell at the end, you know, now you know us, you can talk to us. If you've got concerns, questions, issues, come and talk to us. Our doors are open, we're there for you. And we'll come and talk to you. So when you give us that, you gave us your information, so we're gonna take that. So if you take a look at that young man who's kind of the far back with the short hair over there, the black top on, okay, he's, we're sitting there and he says, I'm not involved in any, any school activities. And I'm not, I'm, I don't plan on being involved in any school activities. So, so Deb immediately, okay, that's not gonna work. We're gonna <laughs> take him under a wing. So then we're talking, so after the left, I said, Deb, I'm gonna put him on my principal's cabinet. So he's at least, we've got him and he's a talker. He's very funny. Um, so that's what we do. Two, two years ago, we found a young man who's interested in, in doing um, a video, videography. It's actually Steve's nephew. And so we tapped into him, and he did a ton of our videography for us after that um, because he had that interest. And so we were referring him to around the school, all over the place, to help us with that. So um, the gal with the gray sweatshirt, she's a com competitive rock climber i didn't even know that that was a, that that was there but one of our counselors is a is a big rock climber so i'm going to connect the two of them together just to so that they there's a connection there so we did so we did this first year we got about 20 percent last year we probably got about 40 percent of the freshmen and it's really hard because devs in my schedule don't jive always together and i will we'll like let's get somebody in and all of a sudden i'll get a phone call from something and i got to deal with it or a kid comes down for disciplinary issues and we and so we just Okay, we'll get it tomorrow. Then we never get so it gets pushed back, pushed back. 
So Deb kind of looked at her dad, I looked at the kids, and what she found was is that the kids that the kids that we talked to, none of those kids had had ever had a second disciplinary issue. So they might have had a first disciplinary issue, but they never got to a second. And the kids that had two, three, five, that had a lot of recidivism, those are the kids that we never got to. So I think that, that proves that that's the, that's the situation there, but it, it indicates that maybe by having that connection with us and we were getting a positive connection with them, the kids who might be a little bit, you know, apt to be, have, have some discipline issues, might not do that. And so we're really going to make an effort. So now what we do is we put it into our calendars. So no matter what, you know, we go in today, went in at eighth hour, we did it. So on my calendar, it's on Deb's calendar. If I'm not available, she does it. If she's not available, I do it. We try to do them together because it works well together. It's a little bit time consuming, but it, we think it really is paying some dividends for just that Again, making those kids feel comfortable, making them feel welcome, making them feel like they want to be a part of our this organization. Um, one of the disciplinary issues that we did deal with last year, pretty pretty extensively at both campuses, was the area of vaping. I, I think I shared that with, with that at some point that we talked about it. it. It's very serious, and it's a, a pro the problem was really quite extreme last year for us. So we're trying to take a two-step approach to deal with this. We had a meeting with all the feeder schools, principals and superintendents came, and we chatted and talked, and they recognized they've having some problems with it, they know what's happening. I offered up myself to go and speak to their parent groups. Three of the schools took me up on it. I'm gonna contact the other four this fall and say, listen, you know, I know we couldn't work it out last year. Do you want me to come in? Because I would be more than happy to do that. But I think more important than what we're going to do, I, I like this idea that came up through the, through the SLAM group, we're going to pick two kids from each feeder school. So two kids from Richmond, two kids from Stone Bay, who went there, who are juniors and seniors, who are popular kids, who are well-known kids, who those kids looked up to when they were eighth graders and these kids were and these kids were fourth graders they looked up to. And they're going to go over and have a conversation, go and sit down with them in their health classrooms and talk to them about the, the concerns about vaping and those kinds of things. But the, the thought was is that I can talk to them blue in the face, the counselor can talk to the blue in the face, the parents can talk to the blue in the face, but the kids might have more impact than we might, than we would have. So for instance, uh, at Richmond, Nick Wolfile is going to go over, so, you know, starting quarterback, all the kids know him. Well, he, if Nick Wolfile comes in and says, hey, it's not cool to, to vape, you guys should not be doing that, we think that's going to have more of an impact than if I say, hey kids, it's not going to be cool. So we're going to give that a try, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, we've got, we're, we're planning this out, so this fall they will be going to all the feeder schools and we'll be uh, we'll be doing that working together with them. And then, what's my last thing here? So, if you notice that um, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about is creating culture for the students, but it's not just for the students, it's, it's for everybody we want to do this. So I want to show you something that you may or may not have seen that we do. It looks a little corny, it's a little hokey, okay, but this is one of our, this is the ch children of one of our staff members. And we have uh, we have them up in up in the office here at South Campus, and we have all the babies up. And so, if you've had a baby in the last two years, your baby's picture is up on the wall. And <coughs> it looks kind of it's kind of corny, but I I will tell you that probably half of the candidates that we bring in to interview for that come to South Campus that we interview make comment about that thing that it's like that really made an impact on them. That this is a place that cares about people. That it's not a it's not this just stale institution, but it's a place where people are valued and that the staff are valued. And so um, I think that it speaks volumes to what we're trying to do, but that's what, when I talk about making it more attractive to work here, because we can't win on the money thing, that's where we have to win. We have to be have that kind of a comfort, that kind of a level, that kind of a involvement and show of caring for them so that they say, this is a place I want to be. And so we, we tend to do those things. The last slide, and you're looking at this, it's kind of a weird why would I put this at the end, but uh, I'll tie it all together here. So, you may not have seen this, but we've done this at both campuses. Have, has anybody seen this yet? They're in the windows right over here. Um, the, this, is a, this is our Arrowhead Wave model, or what do we call it? Or is it the model? Expectations. Or expectations, yeah. be appropriate, be responsible, be uh, respectful. So, we, and we've done this at both campuses, so the kids can see it, but that's not why we did it, okay? Um, if, you, if you see this light right over here, where the light comes in shining right there and, the, and it sends that, that's the, sun, that's the sun coming in through those windows. Well, in January and December, 
the, wind, the light comes through these windows, and it shines right on the eyes of our greeters. It is like they're look, it's like they're looking straight at the sun for two hours straight. It is a killer for them. They literally wear sunglasses when they're sitting there. They can't see when people are walking up. When we designed it, we didn't think about that. You know, we, we said, let's put this greeter station here so that we, you know, so that's, we didn't, we used to have them sitting on a table and chairs, you know, and it just wasn't proper, it wasn't right, it was cold. So, well, we didn't think about that. And literally, so they've been coming to me, so this, is a, this has been in work for over a year. They, you know, what are we gonna do? And we just, you know, paint it black, oh, that's not right. So I found a company that we worked with, and they designed that, and we were actually just gonna block it, and that was gonna cost us, I wanna say like $2,000, just to put some, like, opaque, plain white, you know, something covering over that. And this was, it was $2,700 with everything, that's installation and everything, to do both buildings. And the money's coming out of money that I have, I have raised, it's on taxpayer dollars, it's money that I have, I have uh, coerced out of different companies. And <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and, and the senior party, the extra money from the senior party has, as part of that as well to pay for that. So the, the, per, the, the thought though is it's not, it's kind of a twofold, it's, to, it's really for the comfort of our staff, for the physical wellness of our staff, and then, and then they're looking at it going, they take care of us. They're, they, they, there's a problem, they saw the problem, and they're fixing the problem, not just saying, sorry, we can't do anything about it, we're raising our hands. That, again, is valuable to them. They're going, they care about us because they're taking care of this problem. And they're like doing cartwheels. I mean, because when they, they, when they got really sunny and they saw how much sun's coming through here, and you can see not a drop of sun comes through there. So <laughs> this should be just awesome. So anyway, that's kind of what, what we've been up to as a, as a building group. and. And the one thing that to take away from this that I was wanting to remember is that that pool is getting shallower and shallower, and we need to we need to do whatever we can to support that because it's it's not going to get any better. I was just in the last um, magazine we get from the school board association. They had an article in there to um, across the country between in you know, a six year period of time, the number of graduates coming out of the universities and education has dropped 23 percent. So from 2008 to 2015, it's dropped 23 percent. The amount of people graduating with education degrees going into education. The other thing they said, they don't have a number on it, but somewhere maybe twice as many teachers are leaving after the first or second year in the profession and getting out of it. So uh, that's making that, that, and then you combine that with the baby boomers who are retiring and, and leaving, it's making that pool shallow, shallower and shallower. And we're just, that's something we're going to have to just keep in mind and be conscious of. Any questions? Looks like you got a lot going on. You do. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, we, I got a good group to work with there. They're coming with ideas all the time, so it's fun. So the meetings that you have with the kids, are those during their study halls? So they do it during their lunch hour. So, oh, it's so lunch they hour. bring their lunch in, I bring I bring I bring my lunch, I bring Tootsie Pop, so I get Tootsie Pop. And then they eat their lunch with me and you know, they we chat and talk, and then they so they don't miss any school, they don't miss study hall, okay. they miss their friends. And I will say this: we always have two or three kids that pull out because they don't want to be away from their friends. Or I always eat lunch with my boyfriend, so I can't be on the cabinet anymore. I get that every <coughs> year, you know. So, um, but the kids love it. I mean, just like Ellie said today, when we start Christmas cabinets, we're trying. I can't wait to get started. So it, it's a they feel like empowered that they have. A say and it's you know, I've been doing this that for probably 20 years and it's really been a, one of the one of my favorite things I go in there I just love it I interact with those kids it's just awesome I'm not talking about the cabinet I'm talking about you and Deb <laughs> oh yes yes we take my study halls those, those are study those halls. kids come out of study halls okay. yes okay so we just call down and say send us six kids and then they keep track of the six kids and they send them down. We spend we spend probably about 30 minutes. So they still have time to go back down the study hall. And then if the kid they ask for volunteers. So who wants to go down? So it's not they're not picking on a kid that's got to have that time to study for a exam. You know the next hour or whatever else they can. They know I don't want to go. They they're just the kids who want to go. Eventually we'll get it. We'll get through everybody. How did the kids end up on your cabinet? How are those children? So at South Campus I have to go literally knocking on doors and asking because I just can't they um, for whatever reason I don't know what it is North Campus I have to turn people away every year I get 50 kids wanting to be on uh, principal's cabinet at North Campus and I have to turn them away and when I try to do it when they, they have to make an application form 
And I, I really only have one requirement, you have to talk. You gotta be a talker. If you're gonna sit there and just not say anything, I don't need you there. I want someone who's gonna challenge me, I want someone who's gonna challenge the other students. I want that student who's gonna say no, thumbs down. I tell the kids that story all the time, because I, I don't want you to be there just kind of nodding your head and agree with everybody else. So I want independent thinkers, people who are gonna speak for themselves. So I go through and I make sure that I don't have like all football players or all Broadway company kids. I try to get a you know cross section of students. At South Campus, what I do is I go to the teachers, and I'll go to the choir teachers, I'll go to the social studies teachers, and I'll say, who are your talkers? Who are the people that are, you know, who are going to be interacting? And then they give me names, and then I interview them and, and bring them up. Right. Thanks, Craig. It wasn't Tanzania, but it was really close. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Excuse me. And then the last item, uh, you've seen these before. So what my thought is for my superintendent goal topics for the year. And I typically bring the topics to you in September and then I bring more detailed plans later on um, before the midway point of the year or sometime in fall. Now that we have the focus plan in place, it seems very natural to me to use our four enduring goals. Um, so those general topics of preparing students for the future, uh, fostering and nurturing positive learning climate, communicate effectively, and advance facility infrastructure and technology to support student learning. So I would propose those be the four main goal areas. Um, I mean, we call them superintendent goals, but it really is goals for the whole organization. And then I will, uh, put out strategies or more detailed work to you. Right now we're in the process of determining strategies for each of those categories. And that process is involving staff. We are not, you hear a lot in presentations about team, the building level team, the ODT, which is our organizational development team, or our administrative team. You hear about the teaching and learning team, the technology team. Um, we work in teams. We are not a top-down organization. We just don't function that way. We would not hand staff, here's the strategies for these goals that your administrative team worked out, have at it. We are getting input from our faculty members. So in August, we had an activity um, where within each of these goals, every staff member had a chance, every faculty member had a chance to talk about what are our areas of strength in each of these goal areas and what are some challenges or opportunities for growth or improvement. And we're tabulating, we have 125 teachers, we're tabulating all of their comments and then we're going to see is there anything that's bubbling up from our faculty as key areas within these goals we should be addressing as strategies. Part of the goal of a focus plan is to help us focus. If we have 30 or 40 things on the plate, we won't do any of them really well. So we want to find out what are the, the key strategies to help us address these goals this year. And those strategies might stay in place for two years, or it might be a short-term strategy for a year, and it might fall off the plate and something new comes on, because I don't know that any of these goals will be finished um, within a year or two or three. These are probably five to eight-year goals. Uh, we have another um, activity we're in the process of planning for faculty involvement again in the end of October. And then with all of that input, our administrative team will do our, our wording and prioritization. So I think in February, or I mean November or by December, I'll be able to bring or present you with more detailed strategies of what we'll work on through the end of this year and into next year. Does that sound like an okay plan? It does. Anybody have any questions? Okay. And to me and Greg were getting a little more excited. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> I figured. Just go step up <laughs> I guess I have to go to Tanzania. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what you got next. <laughs> All right, move on. Community reports. What? Greg, you have a You don't get to hear me again. I mean, this is, I'm just struggling. <laughs> Wait till next she's month. She's speechless. Yeah. Talk about needing to step Never. out of your game. Yeah. All right, so your next meeting is September 27th? Yes. Okay. My next legislation comes to me. No, I was just going to say, Sue. 
Yes, oh, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll be great with you. If you're wondering, that, that November 1st then is fine. I don't know if you want to put that in. That's something right. so we know, but yes. I assume that's right. We had a tentative date of October 25th for another curriculum committee meeting, but that's a professional development date. Um, so, so we're thinking we'll move that to the following Thursday, which is November 1st. Well, but the other thing is, is this next curriculum meeting, neither one of us can Oh, yeah, 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 that just came up. And I, on the 27th, yeah, we're both out of town, so I'm here. <laughs> I mean, what we'll, we'll be doing, right? There's a couple things on the agenda. One is a summer school report out, which we do every um, every year, and kind of a look ahead with professional development and some report out on um, some of the uh, like early college credit program, youth options, course options, youth apprenticeship. So you can. Okay, I mean, it, it makes sense, and fine. It depends on you guys and how many hand. I mean, is there enough? I mean, we'd be able to make sure we supply you with the resources that that are brought forward. It's a lot of times we don't get until we get get here. Yeah, for so. like two thirds of the committee, him and I. Okay. Wait a minute, I'm on that committee too. Oh. I just realized that. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Only half the committee. Things really got. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you feel. I could go to the next Thursday for me too. I mean, Thursday's not a bad time. So that's that's fine. I'm not trying to keep it. October fourth. Okay. I, then I don't have the wrong day. That's the next Thursday. I'm going for two weeks, okay. but I can get the information and read it. And Are you back to the floor? I am. We can make it the floor. You're okay. With that. I'm fine. I'm fine. You okay? Six forty-five minutes. Mm-hmm. Ten four. Okay, I told the fourth. Ten four. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Moving on. Uh, finance and legislation. Uh, Craig. Steve. Um, you, you can see that um, there's a resolution. We can click on and bring that up on your packet for the short-term borrowing needs for the year. And uh, Steve has gone out and gotten competitive bids, and I think you each have a handout in front of you. Um, you can see the one that's highlighted. Um, Steve, you can uh, please give us detail on that. Sure. Yeah. Um, annually, uh, this is our annual short term borrowing uh, note, and uh, we currently have a $1.475 million note outstanding, so that one will get paid back. And this one uh, that we were looking to borrow for 1819 is $1.355 million. And the reason we do this is really uh, when it comes to right around January, um, you know, right now in August, we receive a pretty large tax settlement. That was the end of the, the 2018 tax levy payments. Um, and then with the majority of our revenue coming through tax levy, and then uh, the next tax payment, levy payment does not come until about January 15th or 20th. So we, we, we're we in a period now where we have cash, but then it dwindles down as we you know, pay staff and pay the bills. And, um, and the deficit is projected to be about $220,000 in January. And, um, this gives us a little little uh, cushion to help if there are some unexpected emergencies or, or cash flow isn't the same as what, it, as what we had projected. Um, and essentially we, we borrow this money and we will put it to use as well. Uh, the interest rate right now at the local government investment pool is 2%. So um, we borrow the money um, at this amount um, have it available for cash flow and then um, invest it and those rates probably will go up the 2% interest rate that we, we're getting for our investments will probably go up during the year as well so that uh, those rates have gone up over a percent in the last year so we should be able to hedge and um, even though we're, we're spending that interest expense we are going to generate some interest income as well on this money and at the same time, make sure we're protected and have enough cash flow to pay the bills and uh, when the cash is short. Okay. 
entertain a motion to approve the borrowing. So moved. Second. second. Motion, second. Questions. Do we pay? We normally pay back before the 25th, don't we? For the following year, like it says, payback will mature on the 25th, September 25th of 19. Usually, don't we pay it off earlier than that? No, we don't. We this always do that. A, yep, not callable. It goes for a full year. So we got another note um, coming due right before we get this money the day before. So okay. we pay that one off, and then we get more money. Okay. To help our cash flow. And how does this compare to last year? Uh, last year we like borrowed 1.475 million. Interest rate seems like it's the same or close to. It's it's a lot. Higher. It's probably a percent higher. Percent higher. So uh, you know the obviously the the um, the prime is it the prime rate? I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but essentially interest rates have increased pretty significantly over the last last year. You know, as far as significantly. Oh, Probably more than double, oh, yeah. but so from under one percent to one percent. <laughs> but Dave, also, to, uh, as I understand it, we can deposit this, add interest to our credit, and that will offset almost all of this Correct. interest rate. Yep. So the net is only of maybe a quarter to a half. Yeah, percent. maybe a couple thousand dollars to, to have use of this money to ensure that we are we do not run out of money. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item on there, all of you do part of the credit card. And the meeting, that's what we're going to do. Oh, um, yeah, we, I think most of us, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So we have to certify the levy and um, and such on October 23rd. Uh, we all need to be there, or at least we need to have a quorum present. So um, please put that on your calendar, 7 a.m. Uh, on the 23rd of October. Okay. We got that. 7 a.m. 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 Yeah, if you recall, uh, last I believe it was last spring, uh, the state came out with a hundred million dollars uh, safety grant, um, and Laura and the rest of the administrators jumped through hoops to get that done, and uh, we have a list of about four hundred and some thousand dollars worth of wish list items on it, and we managed to uh, garner a whopping twenty thousand some some hundred dollars, twenty-one thousand, and so uh, it wasn't done in what we would consider to be a very equitable fashion um, because it was done by by school number as far as the state concerned not student population that type of thing so it really worked against us only about 40 million to 100 million was distributed so uh, the state came up with a second wave of another grant for uh, the balance of the 60 million and this one's going to be more uh, this one's going to be based on student population we're just paying you know, about around one hundred twenty thousand dollars one hundred twenty thousand dollars uh, in the second wave and we want to use it utilize that money for basically for finishing up some of the safety issues with the, with the doors with some of the uh, the locks and the, <coughs> some of the cameras on the door so we know if the door is open they can see it on the cameras of the Reading area and that kind of stuff. And the other thing we want to do is we have 505, uh, well, approximately 505 doors between the two campuses. And right now, uh, we don't have an easy way of locking those doors uh, in case of an intruder or some other uh, incident at the school. The teachers have to get the key. They have to go out in the hallway, lock the door, go back in the go back in the classroom, uh, secure it from that side. So what we want to do is have uh, retrofit those locks so that the teachers are able to lock them from the inside of the classroom. So there'll be a, a dead bolt or a um, bolt on both sides to keep, keep uh, access on both sides of the door. So they'd actually be able to lock the doors from the inside and I have to try the outside in case of an intruder or whatever. Um, so the grant money will pay for about 280 of those locks. <coughs> And we're anticipating, you know, we talked at length about, well, do we do all of them? Do we pick, uh, pick and choose which teachers we like better <coughs> and uh, protect those classrooms, or, or how do we do this? And uh, part of the problem is <coughs> we'd end up with having uh, a couple different lock systems. 
um, different master key systems, key tracking and everything else. And what we'd like to do is do the entire school when we do it. Um, one, locks of the keys have been issued over the last number of decades. Nobody's really sure who has keys. There's not really good inventory on the keys, um, that kind of thing. Um, and so we're going to try to retrofit the door so that we have a common lock uh, system throughout the entire uh, campus, uh, have a lock control so we have a better idea of who's got keys and, and that type of thing. Um, so we're probably looking at utilizing uh, fund balance for the balance of those uh, 500 doors, approximately 500 doors. Uh, part of that funding also has to be, part of that grant also has to be used for education for uh, the psychologists and some of the teachers and uh, other staff members. Uh, so I think that came up to around ten thousand dollars, as I recall, or something in that neighborhood. Um, so that was pretty much the what we talked about is how to utilize that um, monies from the um, school safety grant. And then the other thing we did was we we got uh, Kevin gave us an up, update on the North Campus Tech Ed um, update project. We took a tour of of the uh, North Campus area. Um, we built a classroom in there. Uh, the, the shop area was, well, part of it was uh, painted, new ductwork. Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, they have a classroom that you can actually utilize and you see what's going on. Uh, it is much brighter. It's just very inviting. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, because of the demands of uh, equipment, we couldn't get the HVAC units, HVAC units in here uh, prior to school. So they're anticipating being able to utilize that space and probably about around October 1st. So teachers have been jury rigging things and making allowances for uh, doing other things as far as the classroom and that kind of stuff until they can get in there. And we cannot get an occupancy permit until the HVAC uh, is, is approved and so on. Um, when we did that project, we had approximately $64,000 in contingency built into the budget. Um, the, the actual bids came back about fourteen and a half thousand dollars over what was budgeted um, and, and so uh, we also did some other stuff we decided to do some painting and whatever which I think was around you know, close to forty thousand dollars I think or something uh, but what bottom line it's, it looks like we'll be around uh, twenty two thousand dollars under budget including the, the uh, contingency and then the overages uh, on the other stuff the other things that we include that weren't really planned for. So um, it's it's going real good. It looks great, uh, very inviting. Everybody's thrilled with it. Uh, the wall has been opened up on the outside instead of just concrete wall. We've got nice windows so students can see in there, kind of like the North Campus where students walk past and see see what's happening and uh, get more involved in that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, that was pretty much our meeting. We uh, and we took a tour of. of a lot of the things that were done, we had some roofing areas that were uh, leaks that were problematic that have been repaired. Uh, we did repairs on both roofs on both North and South Campus uh, this summer. Uh, we had uh, the library at North was leaking. There there water stains along the walls, that kind of stuff. That's been rectified. We unfortunately still have a big waste basket sitting out in the hall, or at least we did at the time, where there's there is one leak that they haven't been able to track down yet as far as where it's coming from. But, <laughs> I don't know maybe they've done that in the last week or so. But, uh, so things are really important in order to do as far as the summer projects. Cool. All right. Thanks, Dan. <coughs> Next meeting will be on the uh, 7, or at, uh, 7 a.m. on the uh, uh, October 3rd. All right. Uh, under personnel, we have one action item to approve our 2018 Arrowhead Award recipients. So this was included with our packet. Included two sitting members in this room. I'll we'll entertain a motion to so move. Second. Motion and second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, aye. Ken and Diane. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, policy? Donna? No report. No report. Uh, WSB, nothing to report other than you've probably seen the flyers for the fall regional meetings. Ours is scheduled for October 25th in Pewaukee. Uh, 
uh, if you're interested, go ahead and uh, communicate with Diane to help you get set up with that. CISA, so anything? New business, we have some employee transactions. We have one designation to approve. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. And a second, any questions on that? We now all in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we have contracts and appointments. I move that we uh, approve these uh, contracts and appointments. Is that stated here? We have a motion and a second. Any questions on those? Why are some of those highlighted? The most recently added today. Oh, they were added today. That's what Thank you. Did. Okay, uh, no other questions, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have no donations this time. Uh, pursuant to state statute 1985-1C, the board will move into closed session and reconvene to address public business matters. We have the first closed session of personnel matters. Uh, roll call, I'm sorry, we need a motion first. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Roll call starting with Kim. Yes. 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 Yes.